All right, welcome back on the show. And we already told you that we're going to be having a communicator here with us to tell us and discuss uh, the postponed elections over the weekend. So with us on the show today is Chidio Kereke. Uh, he works in digital communications. He is the creative lead of uh, lead director of uh, Disruption Communications, editor-in-chief at Lists NG. He's also a farmer and uh, a Cornell and Alliance for Science Global Fellow and a nominee for the just concluded 2018 Future Awards Africa. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank thank you, you for having. joining us, Chidi. Thank you. Thank you all. And you know, I, I don't need to look too far to see why you were nominated for the Future Awards Africa Prize for New Media because you mm. constantly use your platform to push for the good of Nigeria, to encourage young people. As we've seen, you've been very passionate and, um, and you know, active through right from before the elections up until this time. Mm. So I should ask you, first of all, how did it hit you? How did you find out about the postponement of the elections? What time? And what was the first thought that came to your mind? So at about 11 p.m., I mean, I saw the I saw was it one of the news of the media houses. They posted that the election was going to be postponed, and I just felt it was a rumor. I felt it was you know based on no facts because as at that time, um, I felt like it was impossible for INEC to cancel these elections because of how much people have invested in it. Mm. And then I slept, and then at about 3 <laughs> 20, somebody kept calling me, kept buzzing me like, "How can you be sleeping? How can you chill be sleeping when they've canceled the elections?" And I picked up picked up my phone and I just saw it. I just I laughed first like I laughed this confused laugh and then I started crying and I kid you not because I, I, I invested so much energy in this and I don't think I invested as much energy as some people I know we just wanted these elections to be done with whoever wins take the person let's just let's just let things just come back to normal because the atmosphere on social media is toxic if you tweet about against the government you're not supportive you're it, mm. it was, and I just, we just wanted it to be done with, and people to vote and all that. And I just, and then I started hearing about coppers and all that. That's when I knew we had to swing to action first. Before we start talking about Nigeria, let's talk about the safety of the coppers. And I mean, the rest is history. So it really hits me hard. Like, it hits me really, really hard. And I'm sure it hits other people hard as well. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the coppers because my cousin actually is in Baochi. Mm. And she said she yes. got to this village. Okay, first of all, they went to the INEC office there. And that um, they didn't see anybody at the INEC office, that was Friday, the night before, mm -hmm. and they didn't get any security personnel or anybody. Actually, INEC had promised them during the training that they were going to be people to secure them, they'll take them to a safe place to stay in the designated village. They didn't get any of that. Now, when they had to move to their designated village, they did it by themselves with their own money. And then they got there, there was no accommodation, and they were scared of the environment. And at the end of the day, this election was still postponed. Waking up that morning and hearing that from her, we went online and then it was everywhere. So it wasn't just Bauchi. Yeah. So now, I'm saying, are they telling us that they made preparations for three years and there was no way they could think of the coppers who were going to actually carry out the election process? It's, it's, it's really, it's sad. It's a lot of things. Like, there's, there's many emotions to describe it, but it's, it's just unfortunate that we're in a system where things like this can happen and heads will not roll. Mm. I'm not even thinking about the fact that it has happened. Mm. What about what are the consequences of it happening? Nothing is going to happen to the people who are responsible for this thing. Now, he had 180 million billion billion naira about thereabouts. More yes. than that, of course, but mm -hmm. I'm estimating. Sure. He had four years to plan. And at the end of the day, coppers. And we're even talking about coppers because we can relate to them. We all serve. We can relate to them. What about the other people who are not coppers, who volunteer to work for INEC that sure. period? Sure. And you, you put them, you say they are under the sun, and then you put them in the middle of the net in an uns unsafe environment, mm. exposed to the elements and all that. And at the end of the day, some of them were even harassed by people in the community. There was no sure. protection. Sure. In one particular place, I'm not going to mention, they said the policemen just came to the coppers and said the election is not holding and drove off and just left them at the mercy of whoever it is that could come and attack them. It's about you, you mentioned we're in that some people had an accident, some coppers had an accident. We don't have all the facts. Everybody's trying to, you know, keep in mom, so we're not going to mention, but some coppers had an accident. Some of them are in critical conditions. This is unfortunate news, Chidi, because yeah. sadly, this would not be the first election that this is happening to core members. Yeah. We've had this happen time and time again. I stumbled on an article written by the Nigerian narrator, and somebody recounted her experience 
10 years ago, the exact same thing happened to them. Mm. It's unfortunate to see that maybe we're not paying as much attention mm. as we should to these people because in the face of violent attacks during election, they become the focus of yeah. the violent attacks. We'll come back to having this conversation. But first of all, let's connect over to Erumo Egbejile, who is a journalist and a future award winner for journalism. He's over there in Abuja. He has all the facts. So we're going to ask him exactly what um, he says. He's also a journalist with The Guardian UK. Hello, Erumo. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Olive. Um, great to join you again tonight, and good evening to Chidi as well. Hi. Well, good evening. Thank show. you for having us. Now, Eromo, what are the facts and the figures with regards to the cancellation of the 2019 elections? What information do you have? Because we know that you've been on ground speaking with people, interviewing people, and you basically have all the information that we need. Um, well, I, I wish I could say that I have all the information, but INEC has been very sketchy with you know, some of the information, so I'm just going to recap what we have. Um, INEC has shifted the elections to the 23rd because it says um, that it doesn't have the logistical capability to go ahead with the elections as a planned on Saturday. And, um, you know, we're hoping that the election is going to take place next Saturday because from all indications, I've been speaking to some observer missions, um, you know, that are here in Abuja, and from all indications, INEC doesn't seem ready. But well, we have to remember that INEC has um, a precedent, a history of never being completely ready, right? But it has still gone ahead with the elections. Um, so um, in 2015, there was the postponement of elections. In 2011, there was postponement of elections twice, even though the elections had begun. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. But then again, you also have to remember that INEC only got its budget about four or three months ago because there was a long standoff between the Senate and um, the federal government due to, partly due to the political defections of many of the members of the Senate, including the Senate president. Okay. So, um, yes, yeah, so all of these have contributed to the setback of, um, of INEC in getting its budget, which is about okay. $522 million, yes. Yeah. Okay, so, but information reaching us as at Friday, actually, was that some of the election materials that were due to come in three weeks ago came in 3 p.m. on Friday. And that was part of the reasons they gave. Now, are there reasons for that happening? Did they actually say anything about it? Was there any information concerning why that happened the way it did on Friday? Um, well, Mr. Riskua Arabshi, who, who is the electoral commissioner, the resident electoral commissioner for Kano, told me on Saturday, because I was there in Kano, that um, he confirmed that these materials were not delivered to the state office. Some were not delivered to the state office. Some came in late. Mm. And um, INEC has said that one of the reasons for that was because bad weather around the country, especially in the south, eastern part of the country and parts of the north, was responsible for that. But then the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, has countered that and said that, uh, you know, the airports were all open and then no flights were disrupted, particularly for INEC. So, you know, we're not quite sure whom to believe. What we just know is that the materials, many of them didn't get to people at the time they were supposed to have gotten to them. Um, I spoke to ad hoc staff, right? That's the temporary workers mm -hmm. who INEC engaged. Some of them were sleeping on the streets in Kano in front of INEC office and waiting, you know, mm -hmm. so that very early in the morning, by 5 or 7, they will get materials and go across, you know, to some of the local governments outside Kano. That never came. They were not, you know, there, there was no proper engagement, stakeholder engagement. You know, so um, to an extent, yes, that is true. Okay. All right. So, Eromo, as we prepare for the elections, which is scheduled to be happening in a few days, how would you rate the readiness of INEC as well as the political parties? On a, let's leave the political parties first. How would you rate the readiness of INEC on a scale of 1 to 10? We know that, you know, um, they had promised that they would not postpone the election. We saw that in a viral clip, you know, over the weekend, mm -hmm. and they did postpone the elections. Now they're saying they're going to be ready and that the date 23rd is sacrosanct. But from your perspective, from where you stand, on a scale of 1 to 10, how ready are they? I think INEC has four years to prepare for every election. If they hadn't prepared, you know, from 2015, even until now, I don't honestly think that they can tidy up, you know, fill up the gaps that are there before Saturday. But nevertheless, I still think that they're going to conduct the election. I really think that that's going to happen. Worst case scenario is that the governorship election might also be shifted. But I think that INEC is committed, you know, even if it is not fully ready, that it is committed to having the elections on, on the 23rd because it has the eyes of the world on it. 
you know, there's a whole lot of pressure on INEC, you know, so I, I think it will go ahead. All right. Before we let you go, Aruma, real quick, I don't know if you've been able to speak to any of the party representatives to tell us how exactly the political parties are receiving this. Um, I haven't spoken to top people, you know, in both parties, but I, you know, the feeler on the ground from some of the PDP and APC members in, you know, at the grassroots level is that um, their budgets have been expended, mm -hmm. you know, so you have people, party agents that disburse money either for genuine campaign reasons or for vote buying, but money has been disbursed, um, you know, the weekends before, the, the nights before, I, I beg your pardon. So money has been disbursed the night before, and so what has happened is that many of them are, you know, they don't have any, any uh, refill, so to speak. They don't have any refill. They don't have money to go the remaining one stretch. And what might happen is that um, on, on election day, there will be increased voter apathy because, you know, some of these voters who are going to go to vote just so that they can get money, many of them are not going to be mobilized enough, mm -hmm. and then, you know, that will result in low turnout at the polls. All right, thank you so much for joining us, Aaron so We much, look forward Aramal. to communicating with you sometime during the week to find out as much more information as we can. But all the best. Stay safe in Abuja, and thank you for joining yes, us. Yes. It was my pleasure. Have a great evening. I mean, you too. So that was Erumo Egbejule, journalist with The Guardian UK, with regards to the cancellation. You heard all that Erumo said before we went on the break. What are your thoughts? Hmm. The thoughts are plenty. Um, first, there's, it's, there's an obvious disconnect at the highest level. INEC is saying um, they couldn't reach certain places because of logistics. Um, um, the, the, some, well, INEC is saying that, and then some other people are saying, the Minister of Aviation is saying airports were open, flights were, there was no weather issue and all that. So there's obvious disconnect, obvious disconnect. And I just feel like, from a personal point of view, I feel like it's all politics. Um, there's pressure on INEC. I mean, at first, everybody was mad at INEC. Everybody was mad at the chairman, INEC chairman, for cancelling or for postponing the elections. But then, some people now came up with this theory that he didn't want to stagger the elections, which is you vote in some places and then vote in some other places. Oshun comes to mind. Oshun state elections come mm. to mind. Um, so there's this conspiracy that he doesn't want that. There's also this conspiracy that they are trying to make it seem like he's on the side or he's trying to be as neutral as possible. So whenever. So there's. Everything is just... You know, there's a conspiracy as well that they're intentionally trying to kill people's morale so that they will not participate in the election. There's so many conspiracies, conspiracies there. Yeah. So depending on... Is there anyone you're tilting in favor of? I'm, I'm tilting in the favor of... I'm tilting towards the fact that they're trying to make it seem like he's trying to be as neutral as possible. That's my own conspiracy theory. Okay. I mean, it doesn't hold water. It's a conspiracy theory. But then that's the one, I'm, that's the one I believe in the most. Um, all the theories are just... Turning on their own and in, in local <laughs> party, on your own. On your own bit, <laughs> so to speak. So um, um, it's unfortunate. Like I've said, it's unfortunate. What Eromo said um, uh, from from all parties, all parties, both parties are not pleased. Let's be honest. Both people who are supporting both candidates are not very pleased with the, with the postponement. But then, and finances are stretched thin for a lot of other people. Oh. I mean, legal, legit things you mm -hmm. do. I mean, the last stretch, the last stretch before election, it costs money. You have to mobilize the agents to all pull. You have more than 100,000 polling units in Nigeria. You need to have one or two agents in each polling unit, depending on how volatile that, mm -hmm. that area is. You need, you need people who are there watching 247. Now, are you going to pay for their hotels for the next one week? Where is that funds coming from? Um, we're talking about demoralizing people as well. There are so many people who travel to their various polling units traveled, and then they spent money. Some of them have to come back to their jobs. They're not definitely not going to go back. Some of the INEC people who went through, sorry, some of the NYSE, the coppers who went through what they went through have said they're not going back. But actually, the um, Independent Petroleum Marketers Association, Nigeria, the president, Chine Do mm. said that they had reduced fuel prices by five naira for the next five days to actually encourage people mm. who would still want to go back for those who came back on Sunday to know to go back to their various polling units and vote. We appreciate Shouldn't the, that be encouraging? We, we appreciate the gesture. We do appreciate it, but come mm. on, five naira, come on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what difference is that going to make? We're going to speak with Mosu in a bit, but yeah. I want to ask you, you feel the pulse of people. You're a social mm -hmm. media activist. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, you see all the tweets, and mm -hmm. I'm sure people drag your attention to several of the stories that are happening. Mm -hmm. What would you say from your perspective is like, was like the most touching, what are some of the most touching experiences, the most touching sacrifices mm -hmm. that people had to make, make because of these elections? Where do we start from? Mm -hmm. Do we start from the people who actually travel? Some people came from out of the country to come and vote on both sides of the divide. Mm. PDP, some people are tired of, you know, having to send money all the time, and they just want to vote. Some people are still, they still feel like this, the, the current president is working. But they traveled, 
they came. And most of these people have to go back without um, um, having done what they came for. Are we talking about the people who, there was a lady whose picture went viral on Twitter. She, she made prepared kunu and fura and all that. Yeah. Went to a polling unit sell. and you just see, you just see frustration, frustration on her face. And she's not alone. Mm. There are tons of cases like there are so many. You see the NYC people who had to sleep in, so sleep in buses, so sleep in on mats in open fields. And I think, harassed. in fact, there are many people, even people who lost their lives. You know, there have yeah. been stories of people that lost yeah. their lives. And at this point, our thoughts and our prayers go to a friend of Aldo Makeori's. Uh, Aldo Makeori lost his friend who had traveled to the hometown to cast his vote. And in the process, he had an accident and died. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends and all who are mourning him. Now, there's been so much, um, there's been so much issues that arose from the postponement or the cancellation of the elections, whichever way you see it. And several people have had to suffer businesses, events, Weddings and all sorts. Today we have with us Mosu Akinwamide Nicole, the founder of IPC Events, and she'll share with us exactly what that did in the event industry. Hello, Mosu. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Olive. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you too? Very well. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for joining Welcome, us. Welcome, Mosu. So, Mosu, maybe Hi. we should go, go straight to the point and ask you what the effect of the postponement of the elections did you know, with regards to events. So there were people who had events that they scheduled for maybe Saturday mm -hmm. or Sundays or even okay. Saturday evening, seeing that, okay, the elections may have calmed down mm -hmm. to the evening. Mm -hmm. But it just seemed like the moment the elections were postponed, everything just went crazy. So what, what was the effect in the event space? Well, I mean, I'm going to use Lagos as a case study because, I mean, um, if you think about it, on the average in... On every weekend, Lagos has at least 3,000 to 5,000 weddings wow. in the whole of Lagos State, mm. right? And if you're talking about the effect of um, what the cancellation or postponement of the election had done, you can start thinking about how many events, the thousands of events that was on hold because of this election. You're going to think about the perishable items that people have bought for, so for people who were getting married last weekend, for example, a lot of them have bought, they probably paid caterers, right? They have paid deposits to vendors. And I'm talking in tune of 10,000 vendors on the average. All of that is um, some of the issues or some of the experiences that we event planners or, you know, event people had faced um, last weekend. Um, there were people who had um, cancellation of, honeymoon arrangement. I remember one of my clients had called me to say that they had booked their honeymoon for Monday, which is today, because mm -hmm. they were hoping they were going to get married last um, Saturday, you know, but that thing happened, and so they have to threw them off balance, and now they had to, you know, do separate bookings and then start all over again, and of course, it cost people a lot of money, it cost people a lot of, um, so much inconvenience here and there, so I can't even begin to weigh into the amount of um, of, of issues. I mean, Mosu, I can't even imagine this. My heart is breaking at the thought of this now because you're giving us practical explanations mm -hmm. of, you're giving us an insight into exactly what, what happened in the event mm -hmm. world. Now, some mm -hmm. people got heads up and decided, you know, I can't do my event on the 19th. I need to be safe and just quickly shift it to the 23rd in peace. Little mm -hmm. did they know that INEC was going to strike going and now they exactly. have their event on the 23rd and they have to contend mm -hmm. with the election date. What hope is there for such people? First of all, what is the effect and what hope is there for them? Honestly, I don't know. I, I really I really hope that this election holds next weekend, as these guys have mentioned. But for people who have intention to get married on the 23rd, what I would say is you better move the timing of your event much later in the evening to accommodate for whatever happens, you know, um, such that if you must get married on the 23rd, I think I want to believe that the election holds and um, hopefully we are all done voting for, till like 4 p.m. so you can start your reception from 5, 6 o'clock, depending on what exactly you have in mind, you know, and I also say to reduce the scale of events, just downsize the get size as much as possible. I need for anything, you probably have to send out a notification to all your guests if you can. I'm not talking about those Mugomo branch people, but if you, <laughs> if you have a guest list of people that you have invited to your event and you want to send a notification out to them, you know, um, discussing what their options are. So if the election holds, for example, the venue would be this. If the election doesn't hold, it will be this. Pretty much all of that. But I think that um, whoever um, intends to get married next weekend has to, you know, be very aware of what okay. they're um, doing.
please, before we let you go, I want to find out, just in case it doesn't happen, like a person who has an event for next week, uh, Saturday 23rd, it doesn't happen for Saturday. If you were the one, what, should be, what would be your backup plan as an event planner? Just in what? case, for security reasons, it doesn't, it doesn't happen, happen on, on Saturday. Saturday. Is that what mm. you said? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. So are you saying that if the event does, if the election doesn't happen on Saturday? No, if the election happens and then the event can happen on Saturday, what would be your backup plan? Don't have as a an... backup plan to either move the event to Sunday or get married during the week or something. You don't have to get married on Saturday. Or just move it to the next weekend if you can. All right, but, then. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Mosu Akinwamide Nicole, founder of IPC Event and Destination Wedding Planner, as well as author, I beg your pardon. So what do you make of this, Chidi? Final thoughts, expectations for the elections. Do you think that they are going to postpone it again? Mm. Eromo said, I mean, he's the person who's on ground. It feels like, it does feel like if they've had four years to plan, it's one week enough for them to, you know, make do all the things they need to do. Um, more, more, the, more, the most important question is, the materials they already deployed, how safe are they? Are they going to have to reprint ballot papers, for example, the sensing materials and all that? Those are the, those are the real questions for me. Um, if they need more time, me, I'd say if they need more time, they should announce in advance so people can, you know, plan, plan themselves very well because the losses people incurred on Saturday due to the cancellation, if yeah. it's unquantifiable. We're talking about billions of dollars in losses. We didn't even talk about our reputation as a country. Investor confidence has dropped, and then FID is no longer. I mean, there's a whole lot. There are so many angles to look at it from. In so fact, if we look at the money that we've lost, the money we've lost from business, the fact that people are going to work half day on Friday, how much yeah. businesses are losing, the fact that people are not going to work on we Saturdays. We even forgot about the schools that are closed. You know, we, we can't calculate again. how mm -hmm. much. Look at business. How much does a person make on a day? Mm -hmm. On the average, how much are we losing as a country? If we do our GDP, divide by 300. There's so many angles to look at this from. Mm -hmm. But we're hoping, our fingers are crossed. We're hoping that the elections hold and that they are peaceful but thank you so much for joining us thank you to enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch press this button to subscribe on top of our youtube page you go love her